Hello, friends. Welcome to today's class. My name is Benjamin. Our focus is on the junior school certificate examination, also known as the basic education certificate examination, English past questions and answers. We shall be looking at the objective test questions 2020. Uh, make sure you have your past questions compilation guide uh, that will enable you to follow as I explain the grammatical principles, uh, tips and techniques that you need in order to uh, answer questions correctly in your English exams. Now, without much ado, let's get into the lesson. Now, let me just uh, give you an overview of the various sections of this exam. Now, the objective questions at a glance, we are going to start with the comprehension and then we, we will have the summary, the vocabulary development part of it, antonyms, synonyms, collocation, sentence interpretation, phonetic symbols, rhymes, and literary terms. So, but today's lesson is on comprehension. Now, what do you, what do the comprehension questions require you to do? Obviously, they test your ability to extract relevant ideas from a passage in a manner that shows you understood what you read. Now, it is called reading comprehension. And of course, at this stage, uh, you, the questions are in the objective form. So they are quite simple. And I'm going to show you how uh, you can pick the correct answers easily. Now, if you look at this, you will see exactly this is Lego State uh, Basic Education Certificate Examination 2020 English Studies Objective Test. Uh, I want you to open to the page 2020, page one. You will find it, all right? And so we are starting with the comprehension. Uh, but before we do that, I will like to discuss certain principles briefly. All right, how to answer comprehension questions in this exam. Uh, we, we want to examine the key steps that you need to take. Now, step number one is to read the questions first. Now, reading the questions first will help you to have an overview of what the passage is about even before reading it. I'm going to show you practically the benefit of reading the questions first. It will also help you to know what to look for when you start reading the passage. This enables you to read with a purpose. You can now scan for the answers right away. It facilitates understanding and saves time, all right? That's the benefit. Now, step number two is to read the passage carefully and make sure you understand what it is all about. Now, when you read for understanding and read with a purpose, all right? Then you read with the intention of identifying the key ideas required for answering the questions. We are going to uh, put these principles in practice as we begin to read and to solve the comprehension questions. Now, step number three is to go back to the questions and take them one by one. All right, step number four is to scan the passage for the answer to each question, just as simple as that. Now, in scanning, of course, you know what scanning is about. When 
pregnant women uh, go for a scan, they are looking for a specific piece of information concerning the, 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 the child in their womb or you know, the situation of their pregnancy. Now, scanning is a reading technique that enables you to search specifically for a particular piece of information. And the importance of scanning is that when you are looking, when you already know what you are looking for, then the search becomes simple. For example, if you are asked to go into a room and pick a pass or to pick a particular book, for example. And when you get into the room, you forget exactly what you were asked to look for. Then it makes no sense to continue to search for what you don't know because you, you may search for the whole day or even weeks and yet, you won't be able to find because you don't know what you are looking for. So if, once you have read the questions first and you know already what you are looking for, then as you read, you scan for the answers. And how do you scan for the answers? You look for the keywords, all right? You look for the keywords. That's just exactly what it is. You look for the keywords Keywords are the things that actually help you to uh, identify the answers. Now, these keywords are called context clues. The keywords becomes the context clues. Now, context clues are those keywords that, you know, give you an idea of, you know, what the answer to the question uh, is. And we are going to look at all this as we uh, get into answering the questions. So it's time to really go into the questions. Now you can see this is the passage, the instruction, read the questions, uh, read the passage, all right? This is a typo, actually. Uh, this is a typo because what is meant here is the passage. Okay, so that is exactly what it is, all right? Read the passage carefully and answer the questions that follow. That is exactly uh, what it is. But as already explained in the steps, we are going to begin with reading the questions. So let's go straight to the questions and read through the questions. Now, question number one, why was Ngembele's country not recognized? Now, what this question one already shows us is that this passage is about someone called Ngembele and about his country. And then we already uh, have the idea that Ngembele's country was not recognized. So as we read the passage, we want to find out why Ngembele's country was not recognized. So we already have some information about the passage even before we start reading. Then question number two, it was easy for Ngembele to get adopted as, so again, this question number two gives us the idea that Ngembele was adopted, he was adopted. And so that is another important piece of information we are going to look for. Why was he adopted? Why was it easy for him to be adopted? We are going to look for it as we read the passage. Then question number three, what made it easier for Ngembele to run than to walk? Now, this is another revealed fact about the passage that Ngembele found it easier to run than to walk. And we are going to look for what actually made it easier for him to run 
than to work. Question number four, which phrase tells you that the Olympics was not held in Africa? Again, this question number four introduces a new piece of information. Here we find out that the passage also has something to do with the Olympics and that the Olympics was not held in Africa. And we are going to find the phrase that tells us that the Olympics was not held in Africa. Then question number five, the stadium broke into thunderous applauses when Ngembele came in, uh, you all right, either third, second, first, or last, we are going to look for this. But of course, the fact that the stadium broke into thunderous applauses already gives us you know, the clue that he must have come either first or at least second or third, but certainly not last because people don't clap or applaud someone uh, who came last. People jeer someone who came last, but even in such a competition, you don't find people jeering at uh, 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 competitors, all right? So, this is exactly why it is important to read the questions first. You can see that by reading the questions first, we already know a lot about the passage, even when we have not read a single line, all right? Now it's time for us to head to the passage and begin to read. Having already the questions we read in mind. Now let's begin to read, all right? Paragraph one, he came from an unknown country, though not to the extent that the country was not listed or recognized by others, rather a country that had not been known to produce any Olympic medalist before, unlike America or China, where gold medalists seem to be mass produced on daily basis. Remember, we came across a question, you know, as to, uh, as to why Ngembele's country was not recognized, all right? So, and here we discover that it, the country was not recognized because it had not been known, all right? It had not been known to produce any Olympic medalist before, all right? So that, uh, of course, gives us a clue to, you know, the answer. Now let's go to uh, paragraph two. Ngembele was poor. He came from a small village in one of the deepest jungles in Africa but had made his way to civilization, mainly through his sheer curiosity and determination. Ngembele started his journey. Uh, all right, so now uh, paragraph three. Ngembele started his journey out of his village by simply running. He ran away from the comfort of his heart just to find out how it would feel like if he were to have no home. He soon found out that he had got lost and had to live on wild berries and rainwater while trying to avoid being preyed upon by larger animals. How he managed to survive those sinister African jungle nights, no one knew, but he soon ran his way out of the jungle where he was promptly taken in as an adopted child to a certain family named Akonkwa, who could not resist the doe-eyed and chubby-cheeked boy of eight. So you remember we came across a question uh, which uh, is why it was easy for Ngembele to get adopted, you know? And here we can, when we read the word adopted, you know, 
promptly, you know, he was promptly adopted, which means he was promptly taken in as an adopted child. Promptly here means easily, all right? To a certain family named Akonkwa. Now, why they could not resist the doe-eyed, the doe-eyed and chubby-cheeked boy of eight? So you see, this place gives us a clue as to, you know, the 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 answer to that question. So you can see that because we read the questions first. Uh, as we begin to read the passage, then our mind flashes back to the question. So it helps you to manage time. It helps you to save time, all right? Because you are now reading with a purpose and you are now uh, using the scanning uh, technique of reading in order to facilitate and speed up your reading process, all right? Now let's go to the next page uh, and read the remaining. Now, Ngembele was thankful for it was an orphan to begin with. And since no one in his, in his native village would miss him, he settled into the Akonkwo family. He soon found out that he must outsmart outlearn and outrun boys in his family. Okay. They were full of mischief and the only way not to get mad was to get even. He soon found himself always running from his brothers when they turned into bullies to the, rind, to the dining table to get his own share of the food to his adopted parents for help when things get out of hand. Ngembele soon realized that it was easier for him to run than to walk. Now, you see, this gives us a clue because we already came across a question uh, about, you know, uh, what made him, uh, you know, what made it easier for him to run than to walk? So now that we have come across this, uh, we expect that the answer will follow. His physical self was perfect for it, tall and lanky with strong muscular lips. It's, it saved him time too. All right. So we can see now why it was easier for Gimbele to run than to walk. His physical self was perfect for it, all right? Okay, so let's now continue the reading. Uh, okay, it saved he, his time too. Thus, he stopped uh, walking. In, in school, his natural talent for running attracted the attention of Mr. John White, an athletics coach, and he began running for the school's athletic team and ran his way up to the national level. Okay, the next paragraph. Four years later, he found himself on a running track halfway across the world in a foreign land. Uh, we, are, we came across uh, where we were asked to look for a phrase, all right, which shows that the uh, the Olympics did not take place in Africa. Well, you see, uh, Ngembele found himself running on a track halfway across the world. This is a pointer to the fact that where the Olympics took place was you know, across, uh, halfway across the world. And don't forget that Ngembele was native to one of the deepest uh, jungles in Africa. And if the Olympics, if where he found himself running uh, uh, on a running track 
it was halfway across the world in a foreign land, then certainly that gives us a clue that the Olympics did not take place in Africa. Still, when the gun was shot, he just ran. He ran to the finishing line and broke the white ribbon. The stadium broke into thunderous cheer. Now you see that there was a question also as to, you know, uh, why, uh, what happened, for example, when the stadium broke into thunderous uh, uh, cheer. All right, but then we we can see that uh, something had already given us a clue to the fact that he came first. You can see that he ran to the finishing line. He ran to the finishing line and broke the white ribbon. Now, normally in a race, especially at the Olympics and any other uh, standard athletics comp competition, the, you have a white ribbon you know, that is placed at the finishing line. The person who comes first is the person who will break uh, this white ribbon because as he, as he runs across, as he runs past the white ribbon and that right, fight, uh, white ribbon is always, it, it's not made uh, to be very strong. So as the first person runs into it, it breaks and that signals that that person uh, has come first. You know, the person, you know, touches the white ribbon and, and breaks it, all right? Okay, so uh, these are the clues and this gives us exactly insight into how to pick the, uh, the answers, all right? So now, Let's go back to the questions and then we, we read the question and then we go back and confirm. Now, one thing you must uh, take particular note of in answering comprehension questions is that you need to look for the evidence in the passage. This is very important. Do not pick any option just because you feel uh, you have a good feeling about that option. No, it's not a thing of, of gamble. You don't gamble to pick the answers. You look for the evidence in the passage. And I'm going to show you how to look for the evidence. So already I gave you uh, an idea of how you can use the context clues, all right, to look for the evidence. Now, answers to comprehension questions are evidence-based. You must, you must find the evidence in the passage. Now, let's look at question number one. Why was Ngembele's country not recognized? Well, let's get back to the passage. Let's get back to the passage. And then we see. Now, he came, look at, he came from an unknown country. Now, not recognized, unknown. So certain keywords in a passage give you a clue. And when you come across those keywords, then you become a, uh, you become conscious of the fact that you are close, you know, you are very close to locating or identifying the exact uh, answer, all right? He came from an unknown country, though not to the extent that the country was not listed or recognized by others, all right? That was not actually the reason. Now, the next, a sentence gives us the exact reason. Rather, a country that had not been known, that had not been known to produce any Olympic medalist before. Now, this gives us a, 
a clue to the answer. Now, let's go back to the options. You see, we can now beat our chest and say, well, we know that Ngembele's country was not recognized because it was not known to produce any Olympic medalist before. It was not a country uh, recognized as a, an Olympic, uh, uh, as a producer of Olympic medalists like America or China. Now let's go back to the options. First of all, the question again, why was Ngembele's country not recognized? A, it had never produced any Olympic medalist before. That is the answer. Now, all other options are just traps, all right, to distract you from the, the real, the, the correct answer. Now, B, it was never listed formally as a country. Already we saw that that was not the reason. It was not that it wasn't recognized by as a country. That was not the issue. Then C, it was not a big country to begin with. We were not told uh, that it was not recognized because of its size, certainly not. Then D, it was not famous. That also uh, was not the issue. The issue, as we saw in the passage, has to do with the fact that Ngembele's country had never produced any Olympic medalist before. Now, we, we saw the evidence in the passage, and that is why we have chosen the option here. Now, question number two, it was easy for Ngembele to get adopted. Now, you see, let's look through the options. Uh, as he was already an orphan, was that the reason? Mm, certainly not. B, as he looked really cute, I think this is close to it. We saw something, one thing that uh, uh, actually attracted the Akonkwa family to the, the boy of eight. He looked uh, handsome, all right? We saw some uh, clues to that. And as we, when we get back to the passage, we will confirm it because we must see the evidence before we actually pick the option. See, the Akonkwo family had no son. This is absolutely not correct. Uh, now, another method I want you to use when answering uh, questions like this is what I call the elimination method. Now, what does the elimination method mean? And how does it help you? Elimination method. Now, the elimination method has to do with eliminating the irrelevant answers. The, uh, I mean, the irre irrelevant options, the options that are, you know, absolutely uh, incorrect. We, by just reading the option, we know it is, it has no bearing, it has no connection with the passage. So we eliminate it immediately. Using the elimination method can help us to arrive at the answer, even when we are a little bit in doubt. All right, we use the elimination method. For example, the Akonkwo family had no son. This is not correct because uh, we read something about uh, his brothers who turned themselves into bullies. So it was not that they didn't have uh, sons. Now, D, no one from his native village would miss him. We know that, that this piece of information is correct uh, uh, about the passage, but that was not given as a direct reason uh, for his being promptly adopted by the Akonkwo family. All right, that was really. Uh, not the immediate reason. Okay, so we are likely going for option B. He looked really cute. But before we conclude, uh, we have to head back to the passage and confirm 
by looking at the evidence, all right? So obviously our port of call here is uh, paragraph three. Ngambele started his journey out of his village by simply running. He ran away from the comfort of his heart just to find out how it would feel like if he were to have no home. He soon found out that he had got lost and had to live on wild berries and rainwater while trying to avoid being preyed upon by larger animals. How he managed to survive those sinister African jungle nights, no one knew, but he soon ran his way out of the jungle where he was promptly taken in as an adopted child. So you can see key words that you know, serve as context clues, you know, uh, promptly taken in as an adopted child. Why? Okay, to a certain family named Akonkwo. Now, why did they adopt him? Now, who could not resist, you see why? Who could not resist the doe-eyed uh, and chubby-cheeked boy of eight? Now, someone who is doe-eyed, uh, has uh, large eyes that look innocent and all right. Uh, and someone who is chubby cheeked has, a, has well rounded cheeks, you know, that, uh, you know, actually presents that boy as someone who is fat in a pleasant manner. So it is all about his being cute. He's being handsome. So this family saw him and admired him and adopted him, all right? So that actually is why he was easily adopted, all right? Now, let's now get back to the question. And it is now time for us to confirm that, you know, it was easy for Ngembele to get adopted, you know, as he looked really cute. We just confirmed that from the passage, all right? Now, question number three, what made it easier for Ngembele to run than to walk? Option A, he had run from the jungle. Certainly no, we can eliminate this. He attracted the attention of the coach. Certainly not. That was not what made it easier for him for him to run than to walk. C, he was physically suited for running. Uh, we came across the, a context clue that seemed to confirm that this is the answer, but we will uh, get back to the passage and be sure, all right? Option D, he had to run away from his siblings all the time. Yes, this is true of the passage, but uh, we were not told that that was a, the immediate uh, reason why uh, he found it easier to run than to walk. That could have been one of the remote causes, but uh, we shall confirm from the passage the immediate reason uh, or the immediate factor that made it easier for Ngembele to run than to walk. So let's now head back to the passage, all right? And so we have to use the scanning methods. And so we can see that it is this very paragraph that we will find it. Ngembele soon realized that it was easier for him to run than to walk. You see the context clue. Now, the context clue is the key word in the question. The question said, what made it easier for Ngembele to run than to walk? So when we come across run than to walk or easier for him to run than to walk, then we, we see that this is a context clue. A clue is something that suggests that something else is true, all right? 
So that is exactly what a clue. So a context clue is a key word or a key expression that we find in the question, which we find in the passage, suggesting that we are coming closer to the answer, all right? Now let's look at the, uh, the, the next sentence is likely to give us the answer as to what made it easier for him to run than to walk. Now let's read it. His physical self was perfect for it, all right? So that gives us exactly the factor that made it easier for him to run than to walk. And so at this point, we can, you know, be sure that that option that we looked at, you know, is actually correct because we have seen the evidence in the passage. Now let's go back to the question, all right? And that is question number three. What made it easier for Ngembele to run than to walk? Obviously, we can see that it is option C. He was physically suited for running. That's exactly what we find, all right? So now let's get to question four. Which phrase tells you that the Olympics was not held in Africa? All right, let's look for the phrase. Option A, stadium broke into Tondoro's chair. No. B, ran his way up to the national level. No, that was not really, uh, that, that is not a phrase that tells us that the Olympics was not held in Africa. C, a pair of eyes would follow. No. D, halfway across the world. Yes, this exactly we have seen. Now, when something is halfway, this is an idiomatic expression. Now, halfway across the world tells us of a very far distance, something that is far, so far away from where you live and is talking about another part of the world, probably a different continent, all right? So, that actually is the phrase that gives us, uh, a, a, that tells you that the Olympics was not held in Africa. And in, let's get back to confirm from the passage, all right? Okay. Okay, so uh, it is this last paragraph. Four years later, he found himself on a running track halfway across the world in a foreign land, all right? Halfway across the world in a foreign land. So that gives us a clue to, that tells us that the Olympics did not, uh, was not held in Africa. All right, that's the only clue. All the other ones, we are not pointing to a distance or location, but this is the only phrase that gives us some idea about the geographical uh, location of the Olympics for that year in relation to his native uh, village in uh, one of the deepest jungles in Africa, all right? Now, so let's now take the last question, which is question number five. The stadium broke into thunderous applauses when Ngembele came in, option A, third, certainly no, B, second, no, C, first, is likely. We already saw uh, a clue. But let's get back to the passage to confirm, all right? So here we can look at what happened, reading exactly from this place. Still, when, he, when the, the gun was shot, 
he just ran. He ran to the finishing line and broke the white ribbon. All right. The stadium broke into thunderous cheer. All right. Now, naturally, you know the 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 spectators in a stadium cheer someone who has actually won. And we also find another clue that he ran to the finishing line and broke the white ribbon. Usually, if you are familiar with how, you know, the athletic competitions such as the race uh, happen, you understand that the, the person who breaks the white ribbon uh, is the one who uh, arrives at the finishing line first, all right? So that's exactly the way it is. In some cases, they use a tape and the first person comes in and breaks the tape and the tape falls off. The ribbon uh, breaks because this is the first person that comes in contact with the white ribbon. And that is a sign that he came first in that, come in that race, all right? So having seen the, the evidence, then we can actually uh, beat our chest and conclude that option C is correct. The stadium broke into thunderous applauses when Ngembele came in first. All right, so this is exactly uh, how to answer questions, uh, comprehension questions in the uh, junior school certificate examination, otherwise known as the basic education certificate examination. Uh, I, I want to believe that you have enjoyed the lesson and you have learned a lot that will help you to answer questions confidently in this section of the English exam. Uh, this is where we draw the curtain in today's lesson. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next class. Bye for now and remain blessed. Many thanks for watching today's video. A big thank you to all of you out there for being part of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, kindly subscribe to this channel. Subscribe now as a way of giving us support. For notification about new videos, click on the bell icon find the bell icon click on it so that whenever a new video is uploaded you will be instantly notified if you have actually enjoyed the video like and share the video with your friends and relatives this is very important if you have any comments leave your comments below any questions any suggestions we would gladly receive them and respond promptly and positively to them. See you in the next video. I look forward to always seeing you in the new video.